Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thy word is truth. And we are being sanctified today by your word. Thank you for the glory of your truth being revealed in our hearts. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Thank you, Jesus. We submit to your understanding today. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed by the power of the living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, yesterday, I, I, I was entering into an area that really touches my heart. And, and we were looking at something Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26. Let's just, just go back there. Matthew 26 and verse 53. Let's start from verse 52. Jesus speaking to Peter. But Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place. For all who take the sword shall perish by the sword. I explained all this, uh, this, this especially to you yesterday. Now verse 53 says... Or do you think that I cannot now pray my, to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Jesus made this statement that my father, I love the old King James, old King James said, and he will presently, presently. Now that, you see, what does that tell you? The angels are not going to come from heaven. No, 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 no. no. They were already present. Listen, when Jesus was going through all that challenge, there were angels who were just there waiting for a sign from him. Saying, guys, <laughs> you remember Elisha. There were angels so when, when he prayed, open the eyes of this young man so that he will see. And his eyes were opened. And then he saw, he shouted. Now, those angels didn't just come when he told, when Elijah, Elijah asked God to open the servant's eye. Elijah didn't pray, Father, give us angels to surmount this army. No, he says, Lord, open. He already told us that, see, we have people around us. We have people that are with us that are more than this army that you are seeing. And then when God opened his eyes, he was like, whoa! And then Elijah just did something simple. He says, Father, can you just blind their eyes so that they will not see? So while he prayed God to open one man's eyes, he prayed God to blind the soldiers, the physical soldiers' eyes. And God did exactly that. Now in the two cases, the opening of the eye was not physical. So also the blinding of the eyes was not physical. So don't imagine that when he prayed, oh God, blind your eyes, and then suddenly their eyes became closed. No, their real sight was shut. And I told you this before. How people are blinded is they are given a picture to look at. So the moment you're looking at a particular picture, it's just like when someone is physically blind. He's not really blind. See, his eyes are only just seeing darkness. That's what it means. See? So, but he's not blind in the mind. He can still see everything. But physically looking, his physical eyes only see darkness. So a picture of darkness is just put before him. And that's all he sees. So while God blinded the eyes of this servant, this soldier, sorry, he put something in front of them. And suddenly they forgot who they came to look for. And the man they came to look for began to direct them, to arrest the man they came to look for. You understand that? Praise God. Jesus now said, if I ask my father, he will presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Now, according to the Amplified Bible, that's about 80,000. That's 12 legions. But Jesus actually said more than 12 legions. So for one man's sake, heaven can release more than 80,000 
angels think about this and you want to now tell me that you were not protected when such an evil happened to you you know sometimes we we get emotional with things these th things without dabbling into the real truth of it you know I, I recently I was just meditating on this and and I thought to myself and I said to the Lord I said Lord hold on a moment you know we, we read about the apostles of old that that walked with Jesus they they received the Holy Ghost and then they started the work on the earth and they, they were all doing all those stuff and then we read about how most of them died almost all of them died and they were very gory deaths yes some were thrown to the lions some were you know some they cut off their heads so you you read these things and then you, you know even you know you you even hear preachers who preach and say look at how those that went before us went that's to tell you that we are not afraid of death if death comes that's not how to talk as a child of god see you know, we, we glorify their death, which is wrong. Wrong. See, it doesn't matter what you think. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance the bible says, whoever believes in him should not perish now i know you want to say eh, even if you perish in the physical you would they will not perish spiritually no no jesus meant physical perishing also There are some things the church have not come to terms with. We have allowed emotions. You know, just like someone you love so much and then he, he dies. You don't want to believe. You know, you know sometimes it, it's funny how people reason. You, you, it's so difficult for you to face the truth. So you ignore the truth and just allow your emotions rule you. Someone did wrong and the person died because of his wrong. And you, you, you don't want to look at the wrong the person did. You just want to look at... He was a good man. He did many good things. Why did God allow such a thing to happen to him? Just one misstep. You, you don't understand how these things work. Because you look at it and say, but, but, hey, hey, hey. You, you remember the young prophet that God sent, you know, to the land of Judah. That God sent to, from Judah that the Lord sent. And the guy got there. And God gave him specific instructions. Don't eat there when you're done with your work. In fact, don't even go back the same way you came from. As you come from the right, when you're going, leave from the other gates. Don't eat there. Finish your work and get out of town. Yes, sir. He got there. Finished his work. Had a glorious experience. On his way going home. Got to a junction. Sat down there and was resting. And then here comes an old prophet. Hey, man of God. God spoke to me that, ah, you can't come to our land and do this great service. And then, ah, ah, I need to sow a seed into your life. God said, I should take you home and feed you. And he, of, course, of course, he was hungry. Now, when God gave him that instruction, didn't God know that I was going to be hungry? But he says, man shall not live by bread. That's a principle. You don't live by bread alone, but by every word. God said, don't eat there, then you better not eat there. So what do I do when I'm hungry? Ask God for food. He can't give it to you. If he sent you and you have obeyed him, he will give you the food. But don't eat what he told you not to eat because you're hungry. And then you get in there. And he followed him and sat down and, and ate very well. Said, ah, man of God. Thank God he had God do. You know, just like they will do today. And after the meal, the same prophet, old prophet, turned around and began to tell him, Thus says the Lord, you have disobeyed God and therefore you are going to die. A lion is waiting for you to devour. And that's exactly what happens to the man. I remember one time we talked about this. I said, listen. 
Do you know even in his death, there were angels that were present there. That man was not supposed to die. But you see, maybe because he was a young prophet, he had not learned how to use the word of God. He has not learned how to walk in righteousness. See, the Bible says strong men belongs to those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. That was his deficiency. Because the truth is, even the moment he even saw that lion coming, he would have called on the name of the Lord for mercy. God would have shown him mercy. But you know what happened to him? Now, that, this is what the Spirit of God told me concerning him. You know what happened to him? He allowed judgment into his heart. He had done wrong, yes. And judge sentence had been given against him, yes. But he allowed that sentence of judgment to settle in his heart. So he's like, well, it has come. My end has come. After all, I disobeyed God. He would have cried out for mercy even in the face of that lion. And see, there, is an, there was an angel in that place. How do I know there was an angel in that place? When the man died, a lion came out, devoured the man, killed him. No, the lion didn't eat him up. The lion just killed him. The lion left the donkey that he was riding on. Now, that's supposed to be the lion's food. The lion left the donkey, didn't eat the donkey stayed there the donkey stayed there this man's body stayed there until they came to pull out his remains they think that was a natural thing no <laughs> angels protected the donkey angels protected the lion the the, the 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 man's body from being eaten thank you holy spirit you a child of God you find yourself in a midst of wicked people what do you do see sometimes you you are too quick to panic but let me tell you this and let it sink in your heart whenever you find yourself as a child of God in the midst of wicked men Hear me and hear me good. This knowledge is going to help you. Know this already. That there are more angels with you there than the physical wicked men you can see. Ah, Kabaya. So what do I do? Yes, that's the right question to ask. Employ them. Employ them. Jesus said, if I ask, my father will give. Elisha asked, he was given. The fact that the angels are there doesn't mean they will go to war for you. You must open your mouth and speak, acknowledging them. Maroko Sopradiha. Hey, Nakaba Yadu Sofre. Acknowledging them is what puts them to work for you. See, when Elijah told his servant, Fear not, those that are with us are more than those that are with them. What was he doing? He was acknowledging the presence of angels. Kalabaya. When Jesus said, If I want to, he was acknowledging the presence of angels. But he didn't want to use them because he was not supposed to at that hour. Look through scriptures, many instances, you see the activities of angels helping the children of Israel go to war. How do you think David won on his back? You think it's just one stone that David carried and he killed Goliath? You think it's the stone? No, no, no. You really, really think it's the stone? Try this. Try this. Don't try it, please. <laughs> Praise God. I just thought of what I'm about to say. Right? No, don't try. But try to imagine this. Take a stone. And then take a sling. You know what sling is? Over here we call it catapult. And try to fire a soldier with armor. Now if you can find a, a friend of yours who's a soldier who can do this experiment with you, good for you. You know, so he wears the helmet, he wears the metal, he wears his body armor, and he wears everything. Try to think of how many shots you can shoot at him with a stone that will actually kill him. 
Think about it. David brought a soldier down by one shot. It wasn't the work of David. It was the work of angels. My time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.